My name is Brent Blake, pastor of Anchor Church, and I want to personally thank you for checking out the Anchor Church podcast. We invite you to download the Anchor Church app that you can find in the Apple App Store and the Google App Store. There you can find information of our upcoming events, different things that are happening in our community, and hear more relevant messages from our team. Thanks so much, and we pray that this message is a blessing to you. We're going to be in the book of Isaiah. That's where we're going to read this morning, Isaiah 40. So if you have your Bible, get that out. If you have a digital Bible, turn that on. Um, All the people with glowing Bibles in the room, you know. Uh, We are going to be in Isaiah 40, verse 27. And we're going to get right into it this morning because I believe the Lord has a powerful word for us this morning and a powerful word, I think, for you uh, as you go through this Christmas season. So Isaiah 40, verse 27 says this. Why do you say, O Jacob, and complain, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. In his understanding, no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. How good is that, right? That we serve a God that that isn't just mighty and powerful, but he gives us strength. He shares his holiness and power with his creation. He says he gives strength and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord, he will renew their strength. And I'm going to turn the page. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Every time I read this verse, I think I remember the Titans, right? You know, they're in the line. Anybody know? Anybody love Remember the Titans? That's my jam. I get down. Lauren's like, if we watch Remember the Titans again. And uh, I love it. I, I read that verse, and I want to start singing it like when they're in the locker room. But, but, but isn't there something powerful about hope? Isn't there something powerful about hope? And, 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 and the thing about hope, uh, and, and I'm not talking like a, a little bit of hope. I'm talking about a strong hope, a, a hope that you can hold on to. The other night, uh, we were putting up Christmas lights on our house, and I always put them up too late. I wait till it gets extremely cold, and we're like, yeah, this is a great time to put up Christmas lights. Not when it's 60 degrees out like a couple Sundays ago. Lauren was like, we need to do lights, and I'm like, ah, we'll do it later. And uh, so we're out doing lights and and Seth who I I share stories about all the time and a little bit of context with Seth he lives in our basement I always say he's our man child he's our intern at the church he lives with us and uh, so I made Seth of course he's in college he's young I said Seth you are going to help me do Christmas lights and he was like I don't want to I said you don't have a choice you live in my house and so I dragged him outside and I'm up on the roof you know risking my life clipping lights and Seth's trying to untangle them and and you know every time you get lights up half the strands out so then you got to go and find the bad bulb. And so I'm on the roof and we have this section over our porch where there's bushes. So if I fall off that part of the roof, chances are I'm going to hit a bush and I'll be all right. I'll just keep rolling. But we get over the driveway and it's, it's concrete. So I'm, I'm over the driveway and I'm like, Seth, you need to stand right below me and catch me if I fall. Seth looked at me terrified. He's like, Brent, I'll try to catch you, but chances are I'm going to die if you fall off to the roof on me. And I said, I don't care, Seth. I need to feel good in this moment. And, 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 and it wasn't about Seth catching me in that moment, and I didn't fall. There were two times where I almost fell, and my wife wasn't around, so she couldn't yell at me. But I almost went head first one time, and, yeah, it was quite interesting. And, uh, but, but it wasn't about Seth catching me. It was about having some kind of hope. That, that someone at least would be there if it happened, right? And, and some of you know what I'm talking about. And there's this idea of hope that, that necessarily, it, it's just the idea of knowing you're safe. Some of y'all are scared of the dark, and I know some of you grown people are scared of the dark. And it's the idea of having that nightlight on in the room, right? I turn my son's Batman nightlight on every night, and he knows we're right outside the door, but it, it's that hope that, that he can wake up and see around. And this morning, I want to talk about this idea about a hope to hold on to, because I believe the Bible tells us we all have a hope that we can hold on to, something that is a foundation when we're pushing through life that can be secure, 
as we move forward. Not a, not a loose hope or, or, a, or, a, or a little bit of hope. What, what Isaiah 40 talks about is we have a hope that is strong and secure. A hope that gives us power. And, and there's a big difference between a little bit of hope and a lot of hope. And so this morning, I want to get into this because the thing with Christmas is, is a lot of times we think baby Jesus, you know, he came in his golden fleece diapers and he's laying in the manger and and the angels are singing and shepherds are all around and, you know, gifts of everything. But but it's not just a great feel-good story that, that looks great when we put it, you know, out in our front yard, cut out in wood, or Charlie Brown's doing it on the stage. There's a moment of hope that enters the world when that baby is born. Because up to that point, it had been prophecies. And, and we talked about last week how they went through 300 years of silence waiting for the Messiah. And when that baby is born, hope enters the world in a tangible, physical way. And so this morning, I want to talk about it. And, and I want to go back to Isaiah verse 40, uh, chapter 40, verse 29. It says, he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. When youths grow tired and weary, young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord, he will renew their strength. See, when Isaiah is prophesying this, when we're reading this, it's, it's, it's heaven is breathing out this type of hope that isn't, isn't a, a, a flimsy hope, but he's saying God is there and he will breathe hope into your life, a strong foundation. And if you're taking notes this morning, I, I, this is where we're going with this. See, I think we live in a world with a lot of false hope. And so when we, we walk through, I, I talk to high school students, and, and we have some on our team. Claire was up here singing, killing it on the microphone this morning. And, and I talk to some of our high school students, and they walk through their halls, and they see people broken, and depression is everywhere. And, and you hear about these horrible stories of kids committing suicide. Because here's the thing, we live in a world of false hopes. We live in a world of false hope, and people put their whole worth in the wrong things. And I think the challenge this morning is how do we put our hope in in a foundation like Isaiah 40? Because when you put your hope in the right things, what the Bible says is the Lord will come in, he will renew, he will lift you up. It literally says, on the wings of eagles. You will run and not grow. Man, I wish I had. I wish I could run. I'm getting old, and I'm not that old. Some of you are like, you're not old. But I've had two knee surgeries, and uh, I, I'm, I'm good for about two miles, and then I'm done. I'm weary. My knees start hurting. I'm, like, falling down. And, and, but it says, you will not get tired. There is nothing. He will lift you up, and you'll move forward. And so this morning, I want to talk about false hope, because you can build false foundations in your life. And a false hope will always be a false foundation. Matthew chapter 7, we're going to jump there and this is, we're going to hang here for a little bit if you have your Bibles. Matthew chapter 7 talks about this. Jesus says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice like a wise man who has built his house on rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the wind blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who has built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell and crashed. When Jesus finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as the teachers of the law. 
This last uh, fall before we started the church, we took our family to South Carolina to go visit my little brother. And how many of y'all are dreaming about the beach right now? You're like, man, I wish I was at the beach this morning. We were at the beach, and, and uh, we, we decided to start building sandcastles. Anybody ever, you, you do the sandcastle thing at the beach. How many are like, I'm good for the pool, but get me away from the sand. I don't want anything to do with it. Uh, so I know there's some people in the room like that. You're like, I like to look at the beach, but I don't want to go out there. So we're sandcastle people. We have all the toys and tools and we're building everything and and I'm trying to show up all the kids on the beach. I'm like, I'm going to build the best sandcastle. I'm going to make a four-year-old jealous right now. And so we're building this sandcastle, but the tide started to come in. And we, we, we were building this sandcastle for, for probably about an hour, and the tide started to come in. But then on top of that, I have a four-year-old and a six-year-old, and they don't understand building awesome sandcastles. They want to put a moat around the sandcastle. They're like, oh, let's dump water on it. It'll look awesome. And I'm like, no, no, no. And my son comes over and takes a bucket of water after I've been building this castle and just destroys it. In one moment, there was a a part of me, the inner child of me, wept in that moment. I I cried. I I was like, and I had to pause because I almost reprimanded him. And he's just being a kid playing at the beach. And I was like, what are you doing? Anyone ever been there? You see, and, and, and that's how sandcastles work. You know, we see these people who build these amazing sculptures. But here's the thing with sand. If you don't keep it wet enough, it dries and falls apart. If you keep it too wet, it crumbles and falls apart. It is very delicate to hold together. And, 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 when, and what Jesus is teaching here is he's teaching about false hope. He tells a story of two men. One man builds his house on a rock and it says it's secure. But the other man builds his house on sand. And it says the wind came and it came in and, and beat the house and it destroyed everything. And I think what Jesus is teaching, I know what Jesus is teaching, is he's teaching a spiritual truth to us today. Because here's the thing that happens in our lives. We, we, we like to build our life on these false foundations and, and these things that aren't secure. And so for some of you, your false foundation might be your bank account. We're going to get real here. Some of you, your false foundation may, if my bank account is above a certain amount, then I know I'm safe for the future. Or, or if my house, if I have a house with enough room and, and all the Christmas lights are in the perfect place and everything's good and we have 20 Christmas trees and it looks like Santa Claus is coming to town right out of my house and it looks great and all my neighbors are jealous. We have a neighbor that's like Clark Griswold in our neighborhood. He's got, I, I kid you not, come to Centennial Farms, there are about a trillion Christmas lights on this dude's house. And I'm like, some of you are like, that's the dream. I need to get out of my apartment. I need a Clark Griswold house. And uh, some of you, that's your false foundation. Some of you, it might not be money or your house, but it might be your career. If I, if I can build my life around my career and I go to college and I do all the things, then I'm safe. And some of you, it's your children, parents in the room. See, I I believe as parents, you can build a false foundation even around your kids. To say, my world revolves around this, and I'm going to build everything off of it. So I'm going to hover them, and I'm going to protect them. And it's all good. It's not bad. Jesus doesn't say the man built a bad house. It says he built a house on sand. And, And here's what happens with false foundations. We think that that it's just my career, it's just my kids, and it's safe, and we build our life around stuff, and it takes one drop of rain to make the whole thing crumble. One bucket of water. It doesn't even need to be on the sandcastle, but if it's too close, the whole thing falls apart. We see it all the time with athletes. Some of y'all, uh, who, who loves basketball in the room? I love basketball. Cleveland Cavaliers till I die. John Cruz, is, a piece of him just died right now because he's the ultimate Detroit fan. And, uh, you know, I, I grew up by Cleveland. I love the Cavs even though LeBron's gone and a piece of me died. But, uh, you know, here, here's the thing. There was a team back in 2009 that was a championship caliber team, and there was a man named Delonte West on the team. 
Some of y'all laugh, you know what I'm talking about. But here's the thing with Delonte West, is he was good enough to be on the Cavs, and he was good enough to play major minutes, but, but what happened to Delonte West? Some of y'all don't even know who I'm talking about. Because he built his life around his abilities, and the minute his ability was gone, his life fell apart. Many years later, a few years ago, there was a news report that, that Delonte West was wandering around Texas like a homeless man. A, a guy that played on a championship-level basketball team, one of the best teams in the NBA, walking around homeless because he built his life around his gift. If you're an athlete in this room, don't build your life around your ability to play a sport because one knee injury, one moment, one, one second that's robbed of your life, you don't want your whole life to crumble. We see it all the time. And maybe, maybe you're not an athlete, but, but what Jesus is teaching here in Matthew 7, he's warning us that if you build your house on false foundations, at some point the linchpin comes out and the whole thing falls apart. But, but he counters it by saying that we have a hope to hold on to. He's not just saying, well, you guys are on earth and you're, you're building your life in a bad way and it's all going to fall apart. He, he, he's not leaving us without hope. There's a, there's a hope that we can hold on to. The good news is we aren't moving through life, being pushed around by ways, trying to grasp on to everything we can. In, in Hebrews 6.19, which is the verse for our church, it's where literally the name anchor came out of. It says, we have this hope as an anchor for our soul, firm and secure. The Bible says there's a hope that we can hold on to, a hope that we can cling to, because the reality is, is we live in a world of false foundations, and at some point, your foundation will fail. I don't care how good your career is, how much money you have, at some point, the money isn't enough. Your house isn't enough. The foundation isn't enough. And so what Jesus says is that there is a hope that you can hold on to. If you build your foundation on Christ, what Hebrew says is we have an anchor. And here's the interesting thing about anchors. An anchor either will hold you back or it will keep you secure in times of trial. Let me tell you. At some point in your life, you're going to face a trial. And I want, I, I want an anchor that's strong and secure when the waves are coming at me. I don't, I don't want one of those. Anybody ever go fishing with your grandpa and they had like a, a, a bucket with concrete in it and that's what they dropped in to keep the boat from moving around? Like at one of the old uh, coffee cans? You know, that was my grandpa's anchor. I don't want an anchor like that if the storm's coming, right? I want an anchor I can draw. I don't want to be able to move that thing. I want it strong. I want it to hold on. And, and, and that's the type of anchor. Hebrews talks about. See, in Hebrews, the writer is giving us a promise, and not just a promise, but a commitment from God. What he doesn't promise is that you won't face opposition, because we will always face opposition. I think back to starting this church and the opposition we faced. And how God was faithful through it all. And every time, I remember the very first worship night we did. Some of you guys were with us at it. And, and I remember like, yeah, this is the first thing we're doing in Toledo. And like five people showed up. And I remember sitting there saying, okay, God, uh, what, are you, what are you teaching right now? See, See, you will always face trials. You will always face opposition. And what I want is I want an anchor that's strong. I want something immovable. And what the Bible says, what Matthew 7, what Jesus teaches is, when we put our hope in Christ, we build our house on an immovable cornerstone. Matthew 7, verse 24 says this, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the wind blew, beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had a foundation. It matters the type of foundation we build our life on. 
It matters the things you put your hope into because you begin to build everything around that. And if you've ever had a house with a bad foundation, the walls will begin to shift. We lived in a, in a house with a, with a rough foundation at one point, and our floors would literally slope. And I remember my son as a baby playing with all of his toys, and they would roll across the house. Because it had a bad foundation. The, the walls were still up, but they weren't secure. And let me tell you, you might think you're building your life on something that's secure, but, but, but if you are building it on a, on a weak foundation, everything begins to crumble around you. And what the Bible tells us is that God has given us the strongest foundation of hope. And this type of hope is a promise and it's important because Matthew is teaching us, Matthew 7 is teaching us, is that when you begin to build your life on hope and the hope that comes from Christ, you can face any trials, no matter how challenging they, they are ahead of you. Band, if you want to get ready. Growing up, I, I, uh, I experienced this in the most real way. Some of you guys have heard my story. I shared it on Launch Sunday. But, but I grew up in a home. My dad wasn't around. I grew up in a dysfunctional, broken home. And I remember my whole life, I, I built my foundation around friends or relationships. If I can just have a good group of friends, I felt like I'd be secure. And, and, and we grew up around church, but I didn't really understand who God was. And I'm so grateful for a man named Louis Scouza who came into my life in the seventh grade. And Louis was my youth pastor, and I, I, was, I was the kid in youth group that everybody was annoyed with because all I wanted was attention. I was the guy hanging off your neck and dangling from you. And, and every I wanted a WWF. Some of you don't even know what WWF is, but WWE, it's still WWF forever. But I was the guy wanting to wrestle all the time because I thought if I could get enough attention, if I could get enough of love, if I could get enough people around me, then I would feel secure. But here's the thing, that security and that net that I thought I needed became a false foundation in my life. And I'd go to youth group and I'd, I'd, I'd get around these people, but I'd go home just as broken as ever. And so one summer uh, in seventh grade, Louis dragged me to this camp down in Big Prairie, Ohio, which is just north of Columbus. And uh, this camp was the jankiest camp I've ever been to in my life. Like, you thought you were getting hepatitis walking onto the campus. <laughs> it's closed now, but, but I'm so grateful for it. They had this putt-putt golf course that, that was literally just holes in the grass. And we were like, we're playing putt-putt. And you had to, like, you had to nail that thing to get it to roll. And, and we went to this camp, and you'd climb in the bunk beds. And literally, if you were on the top bunk, you would sink to the first bunk because the springs were so wore out. And I went to this camp, and I was like, I don't know what I, why I'm here, but, but, but I, I, I trusted my youth pastor, and he dragged me. And we, we went to this church service, and again, I had grown up around God, but not with God. And I remember coming, and we went into this worship service, and I'm standing there. And, and, and in the most real way, I can't even put into words, the presence of God hit me in that moment. And God began to reveal things in my heart and some of the brokenness that I had walked through and, and the hunger for a dad and for friends and family. And God said, there's nothing wrong with hungering for those things, but do not build your life on the approval of people. And I experienced God in that moment. God said, put your hope in me. And, and, and people ask me all the time, how did you make it through life? I've never done drugs. I've never been arrested. I graduated college. I got my master's degree. And I'm not saying that to praise myself, but what I'm saying is people say, how did you make it through? And I, and I don't have an answer other than the hope of Jesus Christ in my heart because it's the only foundation that stuck with me. And when I've failed and when I've fallen and I've faced trials, it's the only thing that got me up off the ground every day. And I said, I don't know how I'm going to get through it. And it still hurts. And I'm still wounded. But I'm going to press on because I know the one that is calling me through the storm. And when Jesus entered that world and he came down and into the manger and he, in, in, in the most humble of places and he laid there, hope became real to humanity. 
It wasn't something the prophets spoke of. It wasn't something that Moses knew from the mountaintop. It was hope in a physical way. And when we talk about hope during Christmas, we're not talking about a hope of things to come. And I think a lot of times in church, we think of, man, we have this hope for heaven and we're gonna get to heaven and we're gonna get to heaven. And there's nothing wrong with hoping for heaven. But when Jesus was born, hope became present now. You don't have a hope for the future. You have a hope right now in the midst of your storm, in the midst of your trials. And what God is saying is I've walked in your shoes and I'm walking next to you. It's the beauty of hope that, that, that God is with us and present with us today. It's why Christ's birth is foundational to our lives. It's why we celebrate, it's why we worship. And next week we're gonna talk about worship. And we're gonna talk about why we worship and where our worship comes from. But, but if you don't understand hope, you will never understand worship. And I believe some of you in this room have been building your lives on some false foundations. I believe some of you in this room in good intentions have been building your lives around some false things. And Jesus is saying, put your trust in me. Put your anchor in me. A firm and secure anchor. And so this morning, as a community, we're putting our flag in the ground. We're making a decree that we are going to be a body of hope. We are going to be a place of hope that people come in and they don't find just good coffee because good coffee is good and I need good coffee in my life. But that's a false foundation, right? Some of you are like, I need my coffee. You don't know how bad I need coffee in the morning. I'm a grouch. That, that might be true, but it's a false foundation. Our foundation is in coffee and merch and sound equipment and lights and even a good worship team. Our foundation, our hope is in Jesus Christ. And that's the community we're going to be. And as we enter this holiday season, we're going to put our cornerstone around Christ. Because he's the foundation that will get you through. He's the foundation that will withstand the storm. And I want to invite some of you this morning to enter into that hope. And so as every head is bowed, I want to pray this morning. I don't want anyone looking around. We're not here to embarrass you. But I want to pray for you. I want to pray with you. And if you're in this room and you would say, I, I've been putting my life in some false foundations. I haven't been putting my hope in Jesus. And this morning, I want to make a decision to put my hope in what's firm and secure, as the book of Hebrews says. I want to put my hope in, in, in what's strong and what's going to get me through. I want to build my life on stone. If that's you this morning. I want to pray for you. If you just want to put your hand up and put it back down, I want to pray for you this morning. God is here in this place. He is welcoming you. He wants to see you through. He wants to lift you up as, as, as Isaiah says, on the wings of eagles. God, you see the hands in this room. God, you know the hearts of your people. God, we are grateful that you are a God that walks with us that lifts us up, God, that comes down and shares your holiness with your creation. And so, God, I pray that you would meet these people right where they're at, in their seats this morning. God, you would pierce their hearts with your love, your hope. God, that you would move across this room. God, I pray that false foundations would be shattered this morning. God, that people would begin to build their life on the rock that is your son. And God, I pray that as we move forward as a community, as we go into this holiday season, God, we would lean into you. God, that our, our hope wouldn't be built around presents and, and Christmas lights and trees and, and even family, but our hope would be built around your son. And so God, we are grateful. God, we are humbled by the fact that your son would come to this earth and not just come to this earth, but pay the price for our sin so that we can be in your presence. And so, God, we give you all the praise this morning. We give you all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Why don't we stand up?